So where exactly do these purchase intentions to purchase probability estimates come from? For example, let's imagine that for our office meditation service, we calibrated that definitely will not buy corresponds to 1.5% chance of purchase and definitely will buy corresponds to 65.7%. How in the world might we have actually objectively calibrated this rather than just relying on rules of thumb? The answer is we rely on historical data. Typically, this is not the kind of research that a small firm or medium-sized firm would done, but rather this is the kind of research that's conducted by a market research firm that specializes within an industry and therefore is interested in publishing benchmarking studies or white papers that provide this type of information, or this is the type of research that is ripe for academic inquiry. For example, if you do a Google Scholar search of purchase intentions to purchase behavior in marketing, you'll find hundreds of studies. In this example, we imagine that there, we are a marketing research firm that has some historical data that we think could be relevant and could apply to the example of the office, med uh, the office meditation. For example, Perhaps this historical data that relates purchase intentions to actual purchase probabilities might come from in-office therapy or in-office fitness. In other words, we make a judgment call that there's an approximate similarity between the data collected and what we intend to project our results onto. At that point, all we have to do is make sure that we have some sort of longitudinal study that at some point studied someone's purchase intentions on a similar or same scale as we're intending to use. And then within an appropriate time interval, we study whether or not they actually purchased the product. In some contexts, this might be with looking within three months. In other cases, this might be up to a year. Now that we have actual historical data that maps purchase intentions to whether or not someone actually made a purchase, it's relatively straightforward to understand where these purchase probabilities came from. Using the previous 400 records, we track the count of individuals that we observed expressing each one of these purchase intentions. We also track the number who actually bought. From there, we simply derive the percentage. Let's take a look at some academic results that have studied this relationship between individual stated purchase intentions and their actual likelihood of making a purchase. Keep in mind that this research is a bit outdated. It's from 1989. In this particular paper, they aggregated many studies that, uh, that actually observed people's intentions and then later observed whether or not they made a purchase. They then split their intention and purchase probabilities by two different types of goods durables and non-durables. And for us, what we can notice for durable products, the purchase probability stays low regardless of people's stated intentions. Remember, durable products tend to be infrequently purchased, they tend to be expensive, and they tend to be purchased out of necessity in many cases, like a washing machine. Non-durable products, on the other hand, tend to be cheaper, more prone to easy experimentation and trial. And here the relationship between stated intentions to purchase and actual purchase probability is much stronger. Even then, when people said they definitely will buy a product, on average, the purchase probability was only slightly over 40%. Even with these old results, there's two key insights that we can keep in mind. First, we should never treat people's stated purchase intentions as though they, perf they perfectly correlate to people's actual probability of purchase. Secondly, we know that the strength between the stated purchase intention and purchase probability relationship can vary greatly depending on the type of product that we're dealing with. For example, imagine we wanted to see how many people actually would download and play a free online mobile video game. In that particular context, do you think the relationship between stated purchase intentions and purchase probability, where purchase in this case means download, would be stronger or weaker than the results that we see here?